Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote a brief piece today about reflective distributed denial of service attacks, and now this is sort of an oldie but goodie in some ways. The attacks are taking advantage of DNS, and the reason I wrote about them isn't because they're new and exciting, but, well, because they're still happening after all these years. One of our honeypots used to be a reflective amplifier, and it continues to be heavily used along after it stopped responding to any kind of DNS requests, then, well, it's not running a DNS server right now because it would really be useless as a DNS server still, given all the traffic it receives. I also used the opportunity to summarize some simple best practices when it comes to DNS. Not complete, but issues I often see people having problems with. And let me know if uh, there's anything I should cover in more detail in that respect. With Black Hat and DEF CON happening this week, we do have some announcements of new attacks and tools during these events. One interesting tool announced today by Rapid7 is Defaultinator. Defaultinator attempts to address a problem that is probably even older than reflective uh, DNS attacks, default passwords. But for auditors and pen testers, well, it's sometimes difficult to sort of get a definite list of default passwords. There are several out there that are not complete, that are not well organized. So Defaultinator is trying to fix that. It's a free service and tool that Rapid7 makes available now. Looks like so far they have a over 8,000 uh, passwords in their database and Kurt Bernhardt uh, with Rapid7 states that there still needs to be a bit of cleanup happening. And after patch Tuesday, we got exploit Wednesday, this time for vulnerabilities not related to Microsoft's patches. Volexity is reporting that they are seeing mass exploitation of a Simpra remote code execution vulnerability, Simpra, the webmail system. CVE 2022-27925 is the vulnerability that they are seeing exploited here. Now, this is an interesting vulnerability. If you look at it, it allows for arbitrary code execution. So you say, okay, this is a big deal. But then it also says that it requires credentials to an account with admin privileges. Then again, it becomes not much of a deal. If you're already administrator, why do you care about remote code execution? In order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker needs to use the mbox uh, import feature. It allows you to import an mbox file. And as part of the import, uh, files are being unzipped. And then you have your typical sort of arbitrary file overwrite as the archive is unzipped. Well, Exidy was investigating compromise of Simpra servers that apparently did take advantage of this vulnerability, but there was no indication that admin credentials were compromised. So diving in it deeper, looking at the code, they found that there is actually also an authentication bypass vulnerability that does allow unauthenticated users to use this mbox import uh, service and with that of course that opens up exploitation of this vulnerability the additional vulnerability for uh, the authentication bypass was patched a couple weeks ago and it was assigned cve 2022 37 042, but not before someone sort of went around and mass exploited uh, Simpra servers that apparently, according to Volexity, started in June. And Volexity scanned for the common backdoors being left behind by uh, these exploits and found about a thousand backdoored Simpra webmail instances. So given that uh, this happened in June, the actual patch was then released at the end of July. If you're running Simpra, definitely take a look at Volexity's blog and double check that you are not affected. And it's getting hard to track VMware exploits these days. We had a number of interesting and easy to exploit vulnerabilities, many of them exploited in the wild in various VMware products in the last 
few months. The latest one is the Realize VMware release and update patching four vulnerabilities. Now, they're only uh, rated important, but uh, let me first talk about some of these vulnerabilities. Out of those four, there are three that allow arbitrary code execution, but only by authenticated users. And that sort of puts them in the important, not the critical category. But then there's another important vulnerability that allows an unauthenticated user to create a user with admin privileges. Uh, well, uh, you can see there may be some interesting chaining of vulnerabilities here that could make this something that you pretty much want to patch right now. And then we got sort of a Microsoft Patch Tuesday cleanup item. Customers using Cisco's Meraki equipment apparently had issues connecting to Microsoft 365 today. The problem here was a false positive triggered by a snort rule. And of course, Cisco Meraki is using snort. The rule that was the problem here was released uh, in response to Patch Tuesday. It has since been removed, but if you're using Snort, well, it may also affect you. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.